like all the headlines about the bill that passed last night say two trillion dollar bill which is obviously a lot and look we're in a, a major emergency it's a pandemic we should still note though that some things are easily paid for the money can be conjured up we know that um but other sorts of things that's eh, impossible let's debate it for another 20 years or whatever if it comes to if it's healthcare, it's education it's protecting our environment those sorts of things um but the issue is that in all likelihood this is not a two trillion dollar bill this is a many times more trillion dollar bill um i was reading on the american prospect uh david dan he had uh, an article. Uh, let me read a couple of excerpts. He says, the number you're hearing is $500 billion. That's the portion that's going to just directly go the aforementioned slush fund for corporations. Um, he says, of that, $75 billion goes to the airline industry and the mysteriously named, quote, businesses critical to national security. The other $425 billion helps capitalize a $4.25 trillion, with a T, leveraged lending facility at the Federal Reserve. The taxpayer dollars would soak up any losses from that lending program. The loans won't be secret anymore, but the oversight is largely after the fact, without subpoena power, and mainly reduced to writing reports. He calls it a money cannon uh, aimed at CEOs and said it can therefore go to executive compensation or mergers or wholesale purchases of distressed businesses or whatever whatever other financial engineering the accounting department can muster. And once the company returns to health, it can leak out cash to investors and during the loan too in dividends. There's no requirement to keep workers hired. In fact, the necessary provision to boost unemployment insurance for four months to 100% of median salary, including furloughed workers, gig workers, and freelancers, means that these companies can fire with relative impunity. And so you you take all of that, and if this is the bill that passes, if the House, you know, basically just takes up their wording and they pass it, this is an unprecedented amount of money that is being thrown at corporations with virtually no controls, and the only controls that exist will be after the fact that will be basically impossible to stick. This money could end up going to massive golden parachutes, stock buybacks, all like all the, the sorts of stuff that we know have happened in past bailouts that they're promising they're not going to do this time, but there's no actual legal mechanism to make sure that they don't do it. Yes, asking corporations to just do the right thing, that always works out, doesn't it, John? I mean, mm -hmm. the, you, there was even Carly Fiorina, I just saw the headline before I came on here, basically saying that she thought the bailout money was too soon and that a lot of these companies could have lasted and that money should have gone directly to constituents. I'm paraphrasing here, but that's exactly what it should have been. I mean, the, 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 the problem with it is, is that most people aren't going to read the fine details and the political opportunism of the Republican is that they want to get a bill passed right away, right away, and many corporate Democrats as well, to give the appearance of uh, providing relief. And then people figure out in a few weeks' time that that relief was not enough for them or their families. It's the appearance of doing something as opposed to doing nothing more than the substance of what's actually going to be in the bill. Yeah. Yeah. I And, you know, I worry... Like, everybody's been so frustrated with them not doing anything in the Senate. And, you know, obviously Trump is taking, like, a behind-the-backseat approach to this. Um, that they're just going to see, hey, something is done. The Republicans and the Democrats are getting together. They're getting along. And what will be lost will be the long-term fallout of this. The like, and, and the thing is, Bernie Sanders, obviously, he's been raising from the very beginning. One of his three principles for dealing with this was that there needs to be a, a centralized authority that will be a check on uh, corporate profiteering, price gouging, but also corruption that will come out of the bailout. And I haven't seen anything like that. Um, I mean, the, the very minor uh, I I efforts in this, the inspector general and that that panel, like they are going to end up making off with hundreds of billions of dollars, potentially trillions of dollars by the time this is done. And I know how this works. In a couple of years, maybe a year, there's gonna be a great write up on it. Maybe maybe in the center for you know like um, public integrity or something like that, or the Intercept will do it, and we'll talk about it. And no one will go to jail. The money won't be gotten back. It'll just be a bit of news. Like, hey, what do you know? They made off with trillions during this thing, but don't talk about Medicare for all. Don't talk about a Green New Deal. Couldn't possibly afford it. Yeah, I mean that's part of what we've been what we've seen in this crisis is that we do have reserves of money that can uh make things happen for uh regular Americans, but we just choose not to. So when you have a crisis like this, you test the boundaries of what is possible in government and everyone's beginning to realize, "Oh wait, uh actually they could provide all of these things 
for yeah. uh, the American people. We can pay for it. Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.